Hey y'all, okay, so I'm getting real results here, working out with Kiara Lachey, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and taking my ISO tea, y'all. I am really getting it in, y'all can get these booty bands, y'all can get cute little workout outfits and everything from TeamLachey.com, the link is down below in the description box, okay, check out these results right here get into it y'all should also check out waist not beads um she sent me these and i really love them but yes y'all get onto this iso tea i know they tell y'all it's a scam but it's not like look at me and let's not forget about oh me get you some come on now get all moisturized and such let your natural hair live so y'all let's talk so the emmys apparently the emmys um, went ahead and finally paid attention to black folks. They did not, however, pay attention to Latino folks. Let's go ahead and read what they're saying at Oprah Magazine. So, the kickoff to award season is officially in full swing with the announcement of the Emmy nominations on Tuesday. On the surface, there have been major strides towards inclusion of diverse projects. HBO's Insecure, for example, is up for Best Outstanding Comedy Series, a first-time nomination for creator Issa Rae. Other notable recognition includes 11 actors who have been openly identified as members of the LGBTQ community, as well as 36 actors of color, okay? Yet, for a ceremony that is centered around giving props to entertainers and their work, the nominations are also a blaring indication of the work that's been ignored. This year's Emmy nominations didn't include any Latinx shows or actors in major categories. The ceremony comes at a time when companies and organizations have been under intense scrutiny for diversity and inclusion efforts following the death of George Floyd, which resulted in a rise of the Black Lives Matter movement. In the past, television and movie in the past, television and movie academies in particular felt the pressure to diversify their selections after the social media campaign hashtag Oscar So White went viral in 2015. While the Emmy Awards have broadened just enough to confront the issue of diversity in Hollywood in recent years, they still have neglected to make room for all of the varying communities of color. In a statement to the Los Angeles Times today, the Television Academy addressed the need for more diversity dynamic representation and said we feel it is a very positive sign that over the past decade the well-deserved recognition of performers of color have increased from one to ten to one in three nominees across all performer categories clearly that increase in representation has not been equal for all groups and clearly there is still more to do to improve both gender and racial representation across all categories the disregard for latinx figures in these nominations is also signaling a large larger lack of representation in the entertainment industry. So let's skip down. Online folks are calling out the Emmys for their exclusion of Latinx centered shows. The Latinx actors MJ Rodriguez, who stars as Blanca Rodriguez Evangelista on Netflix's Pose, did not get nomination and neither did the series. Co-creator and executive producer Stephen Canals tweeted in response to the snub. Okay, real talk. What does MJ Rodriguez have to do aside from bearing her heart and pouring her soul into every damn scene to get a Best Actress nomination. Now, I agree with that. I personally feel like MJ Rodriguez absolutely should have gotten a, a nomination for Pose. Pose should have gotten a nomination. It just it doesn't make any sense to me for a show to be so good, so uh, sought after, so well-received, so um, dynamic in its time frame. Like, this is a show that I think a lot of people have been waiting on. Representation of trans women. And I, I you know, in, in a large way, not just in the Orange is the New Black Laverne Cox and, you know, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. You know, in, okay, Amaya, we have Amaya Scott, you know, but like on a large, you know, white people scale, Laverne Cox is pretty much it. You know what I mean? You know, you know what I'm saying? Even though I feel like Pose has brought so many different people to the forefront that deserve recognition and nomination. So I do agree with them about that. And I feel like there are other shows um, that are not being paid attention to in the Latin community. Now that I have said that I understand where the Latin community is coming from, let's talk about Dasha uh, Dasha's, uh, Polanka's tweet. Okay, Dasha Polanka also um, was in Orange is the New Black. 
she sees herself as an Afro Latina. You know, Afro Latina girls basically just look like light skinned black girls with just softer texture of hair. Okay, that's basically what it is. People feel like she was shading the black community with this tweet after uh, John Leguizamo tweeted his tweet about not being noticed, not being paid attention to. And she says, if it's only us speaking up on it, no one cares. It's the silence from those that fight for equality, but only their equality. Diversity, but diverse enough to include thyself. That mentality of as long as I'm good, I don't see a damn thing. And people took that as her coming at the black community. And here's the thing. She said she didn't mean the black community and I hope she didn't mean the black community because if there is any community of people that champions every fucking body but themselves, it's the black community, okay? We always include black and brown and people of color. We have just now started to create this separation because we notice that a lot of Latino people think they're white. OK, y'all think y'all are closer to them than y'all are to us. And some of y'all are and some of y'all are not. <laughs> OK, because let's not forget that Brazil is made up largely of, of slaves. OK, African slaves. So a lot of y'all have African in y'all bloodline to begin with. Trying to act like you're going to be 100 percent Dominican, 100 percent Puerto Rican. Cut it the fuck out. OK, you are a mixture of indigenous Portuguese, Spaniard and African people. Cut it out. OK, and there might be a little Ashkenazi Jew in there, depending on where you come from. But the point still remains, OK, that black people always buck for y'all. OK, we always include y'all. Y'all, however, feel a separation from us. Fuck, y'all feel a, se a separation from one another. Y'all can't even figure out y'all own shit. You know, y'all mad when the Puerto Ricans are called Mexicans or the Mexicans are called, are called you know, or Puerto Ricans or the Dominicans are thought of as black because they have dark skin like <laughs> child. OK, I personally feel like we do enough screaming for everybody. We need to focus on ourselves and the Latin community needs to create their own thing like Latinx is y'all own thing and y'all need to be out there fighting and you know, uh, getting out there and making sure that y'all are fighting for y'all causes. Stop expecting black people to fight for everybody's fucking cause. OK, because we do it and then we don't get it in return. It's just now with George Floyd that everybody wants to be paying attention to Black Lives Matter. We've been shouting this shit for years since Trayvon Martin and even before then. And y'all was acting like, you know, it ain't nothing really happening. Homes, it ain't really affecting us, homes and all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like there are a lot of Latino people that are, you know, prejudiced and bigoted against black people because they want to feel closer in proximity to white people, you know, or who have been raised up with a lot of negativity towards African people. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Miss me with that shit about how we need to speak up for y'all. We already do. <laughs> we already do. OK, at least that's the way I feel, because I personally, you know, feel like if it were not for the civil rights movement and what black people did, none of you minorities would be able to come here and live the lives that y'all live. Everybody that comes from another country, Latino people, uh, other African people, people from the diaspora, all y'all that come here and are able to live good lives and all of that, that is because black people fought for that shit before y'all came here, okay? Just to be clear. Vietnamese people, Chinese people, all y'all, cause none of y'all wasn't here yet neither, okay? Not like that, it was us and them. Child, I rarely seen any Latino people in Louisiana until after Katrina, but yeah, okay? We love y'all, okay? And, and as, to me, as a black woman, I see myself in a lot of, you know, Afro-Latinas and people who are, you know, obviously, <laughs> okay, somebody's great-grandmother is a black lady, obviously looking at them, their head texture, their skin color, their facial features, whatever, okay? So I don't see myself that different from y'all, but I do recognize that we are different and y'all as a people, y'all are mixed up on understanding who y'all are, okay? And, and I think that's why y'all can't come together um, as much as y'all would like to um, because y'all are a mixture y'all selves and y'all have a hard time dealing with that but you can't expect black people to buck for y'all all the time because y'all are always trying to create separation between us y'all do it y'all selves you know I'm not black I'm Dominican I'm not black I'm Puerto Rican I'm not black I'm whatever child <laughs> remember that you said you wasn't black so stop expecting us to always carry everybody else's torch we're gonna carry our own for a little while and see how that works out for us 
because we're tired, okay? And that's just how I feel about that. Let's move on to the next subject. Sadly enough, the officer who shot Michael Brown will not face charges. And the only re reason that I'm bringing this up is because there are so many people that feel like shit is being fixed. So many people that feel like, you know, um, it it's getting better. Is it really? Is it really? Let's read what they say. This decision is just one of three separate times prosecutors have investigated and declined to charge Wilson. A St. Louis County grand jury declined to indict Wilson in November 2014, as well as U.S. Department of Justice in March 2015. Brown's parents and St. Louis activists say when Bell, the county's first black prosecutor, took office last January, they had hoped he would be able to get them the justice they've been waiting for. But Bell called the announcement one of the most difficult things I've had to do, adding my heart breaks for Brown's parents. I know this is not the result they were looking for and that their pain will continue forever, the prosecutor said in press conference. It's amazing how we keep, you know, electing you black men because we think y'all are going to actually make the situation better and y'all are just as Uncle Tom as anybody else. Bell revealed in his statement, that his office conducted a five month long unannounced investigation during which they reviewed witness statements, forensic reports and other evidence. The question for this office was a simple one. Could we prove beyond a reasonable doubt that when Darren Wilson shot Michael Brown, he committed murder or manslaughter under Missouri law? After an independent and in-depth review of the evidence, we cannot prove that. How could you not prove manslaughter? He's dead. Our investigation does not exonerate Darren Wilson. Of course it doesn't. Brown's killing on August 9th, okay, happened when Wilson told Brown and his friend to get out of the street. A scuffle ensued between Wilson and Brown, which ultimately led to the shooting. Brown was not armed, but Wilson claimed Brown came at him menacingly, forcing him to fire in self-defense. Brown's body remained in the street for four hours before being transported. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Much like George Floyd, the shooting led to months of unrest in Ferguson and helped solidify the national Black Lives Matter movement that began following Trayvon Martin's death at the hands of George Zimmerman in February 2012. After three investigations, Wilson's attorney, Jim Towie, said it's clear that the former officer didn't commit any offense. We all had the same conclusions. There was no crime. He said, I'm just hoping that everybody gets to have closure, particularly the Brown family. Man, fuck you. That closure of the Browns may be hard to come by. There is still a gaping wound, says Brittany Packnett Cunningham, educator and Black Lives Matter activist. I'm not disappointed. I'm fed up and never more committed, truth be told. She also adds that nothing will change until the system itself does. Her thoughts echoed by leading St. Louis activist, Reverend Daryl Gray, who says the system is who truly failed Brown and his family, not Bell's investigation. I'm trying to understand how two people end up in a physical altercation. You pull your gun and shoot them and kill them, even though they weren't armed. I need to understand how that is not manslaughter. Even if you didn't intend to kill them, if it was a scuffle, if this man were not a police officer, he would be in jail. Like, or better yet, if he were a black man who this had happened. Like, if it, it's just a matter if it were two black men who got into a fight and one shot the other, he would have been in jail from that moment up until the trial and then after the trial and then for the rest of the 20 years of his life that he would be in jail. But the fact that this man is a white police officer, you can actually open up your mouth on national television and tell us that no crime was committed. And y'all wonder why we so mad.